So why did we start WSO2? I started WSO2 for a couple of reasons. One was I wanted to show that this thing about creating open source technology, which we had done, we were doing in Sri Lanka already, was also a commercial opportunity that we could build a, a real software company, a scalable software company from this side of the world. In 2005, there was not a single software company from this side of the world in the enterprise space. And we want to prove that we could do that. And second was, I, I, I'm a technologist and that's the technology space I'm familiar with and I want to keep building that. And I, and I was working for IBM Research at the time and they didn't want to continue that work. So I wanted to take this and move it forward. So WC2 was always designed as a company that is trying to be a creative business. So we are a software company, we make software products. And creating software products means you have to understand the problem you're trying to solve, you have to understand the customer, you understand their needs, and create some technology that addresses the needs of those customers. So to make that work, you need to have a creative atmosphere. So the environment and the culture and the operating model was designed always around saying, how do creative people like to work? What is the mindset and the environment you need in order to be creative and effective? So that's how we got into saying it's a flexible work environment, you come at whatever time, we don't monitor whether you're doing any work or not. You know, If you're not feeling good, you're not going to be creative that day. Well, tough luck, right? So what we are trying to do is to create that atmosphere so people can be very productive and be very effective and we support them to the maximum possible in the environment and the culture and the values and then they can get on with what they do. Well, that's easy. The one that I'm most proud of is, is uh, the people. Uh, you know, we have, uh, uh, there are, I think there are close to 100 people who have gone through WSO2, gone through as in moved on, and who've gone on to grad school and, and uh, are doing PhDs or graduate studies in computer science. More than 50 have completed already. And we have, within WSO2, we have created an amazing team of people who are absolutely world class. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we compete with the entire world, with the best in the world, and we can beat them. And it's completely people. So every part of it is people. And when I started the company, I was living in Sri Lanka and I didn't want to go back to the US, but we had a lot of pressure saying when we were raising money, we couldn't raise money being in Sri Lanka. Uh, even the first uh, institutional money we raised was $4 million. Even that one, they gave it to us in two tranches because they weren't sure whether if they give us $4 million, we'll take it and run with it because the legal structure of Sri Lanka was not understood by VC type people. Uh, so the, the one thing that was always difficult was raising money and that made our growth not as accelerated as we could have done it. But I, you know, but I, I still refuse to go back to the US, so, so that's not an option, but maybe if, if we could have found another way to make that accelerate, that would have been better. I think the only thing to be afraid of is we becoming complacent. We work in an extremely competitive market segment, extremely competitive technology space very low barriers to entry. Any any joker can get up tomorrow morning and come up with an idea that can compete with us. And you know, 10 jokers can get together and write it up. So we have to be those jokers. We can't let somebody else do that. And we have to be always on the ball and never sleeping and take every little bit of competition seriously and, and beat them. Can be done, uh, but getting complacent, especially when you become larger, when you have more money to spend, it's easy to say, well, we'll try this, try that. Uh, you can't do that in this business. You have to be very, very, you know, uh, Amazon's uh, Jeff Bezos, as a line, every day is day number one. You need that spirit in, in a tech company, otherwise you cannot compete. Um, probably not. But then, you know, one of the things about tech companies is you have to let the founder find his or her way through the company and build it up. Uh, most, there was a time when there was a feeling that you let the founder start the company, bring it up a little bit, then you bring a professional CEO. That mindset has gone because uh, building a tech company is not about being a professional CEO. It's about being innovative, being creative, having that hunger, having a deep understanding of the problem. So it's not really replaceable. So I, if I was in an abstract way, I would say, no, hell no, I wouldn't hire me. I didn't know anything about business. I still don't know anything about business. Uh, but uh, practically, that is, that is the model that we follow now. You don't fire the CEO anymore, founder anymore. You keep them around as much as you can and you help them grow. The best part is uh, uh, you have a lot of control, even though you don't have ownership of the company or whatever, it doesn't really matter because you're the founding CEO. You can't really be replaced, you know, you can't, you can't just find another person and say, go do that job. Uh, that's in some sense the best part. That's also the worst part because you're responsible for everything. You have to pull everything together. 
and uh, and especially when a company grows the expectations of investors and board members change they expect you to operate at a certain level and you have to grow with them and that takes time so there's always a bit of a, a catch up uh, you know leapfrog catch up kind of behavior that you need to adopt and execute and that's frustrating at times and uh, but you know it's all it's all an experience or should I ask the team but uh, I think I would probably get described as uh, somebody who's extremely uh, uh, passionate about what I do, uh, very aggressive in terms of just go get on with it. I don't take no for an answer. Uh, I I tend to break down arguments uh, to its core and try to build an answer back up from that. Uh, so I'm not easy to work with. I, that's that wasn't a goal. My goal was to drive everyone to uh, you know for us to do more than what we can do individually. And uh, uh, that's what I that's what I enjoy doing, and I I, I think uh, so. Certainly, the people who work closely with me we know it's not exactly easy work with me, but uh, you know we get things done. So, when I'm not at work, I I volunteer for a lot of stuff, all in the tech space. Uh, you know, I've been a volunteer for uh, tech stuff in Sri Lanka for a long time. I used to run all email to Sri Lanka in the early '90s. And I've done, and I still continue to do that. I run the Open Source Foundation yet. I, for example, we're writing software for the elections right now uh, to finish some code today before we can finish it for Monday's uh, Wednesday's election. Um, a, so I do a lot of that stuff. I uh, I have uh, three kids. I, you know, my, except my kids are much bigger now. My youngest one is uh, 17 and a half. Um, and uh, and also uh, I play whatever I can play. I'm not very athletic, but I play any sport intensely, and I love doing anything. So. I would say what keeps me awake is this sort of uh, you know, constant awareness that we are in, in a race, uh, and it's a it's a never-ending race. It's always competitive. It's always challenging. Um, what makes me get up and go is is the fact that uh, you know we 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 can do it, and we've done it, and we have a long way to go. We are still a tiny company in the spectrum that we are playing in. And we have a long way to go and we can still do it. And we are just keeping that going is what gets me going. So WC2 was always designed as a company that would be a long-term software company. We didn't uh, design it as a company that we build up to a certain point, sell it and go start another company. I, mean, I don't intend to be a serial entrepreneur. I did it as a way of saying we want to create technology that, that I'm passionate about is how it started. Now we have a much larger team. A lot of people who are passionate about the technology, I'm one of them now. And we wanted to build that. So we, the goal is to build a, a permanent software company that lasts for a long time. Um, so we want in five years, we, we need to be at least 10 times as big as we are right now. And we need to be a, a major software brand in the world.